Greetings everyone, I'm Father Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO playing as a Divine Mandate of Siberia. Last time we fought both, or actually all three, Kamchatka, first of all, then we helped capitulate Chita, and then we beat up Irkutsk. And now we're picking up pretty close to where we left off yesterday. We have an event, as well as a focus to do, but someone did ask in the comments in yesterday's video. What's the culture of Slovenia? Apparently it is Kranish. A product of German colonization of Carniola. Also, Ljubljana, Ljubljana is still Slovenian, so someone recommended or asked about that. Regardless, purging he who purges. Thus saith the Lord, in the shape of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Deep in the land of Rakutsk, when the soldiers of the Lord broke through and took the city, did a certain man drag to the city square test off father. I am Genrik Yagoda, proud servant of the Central Committee of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the punishing hand of the revolution, and he who rejects your false words did the man scream. The crowd screeched forth, demanding the man's immediate death for the Lord. However, so defiantly tall did the father stand at the man's side, bending to meet the poor man's beaten face. Be not afraid, my elder, for we seek not your death, but merely God's redemption of the sunken land. Perhaps you may join us for a step forward into a new life. Yet a wall of sin came to meet the father's eyes. Do you all forget Bukharin? Alexander Man is nothing but a fraudulent cultist, screamed the man named Yagoda, only to be met with the cries of a fierce peasantry, ready to tear him apart. Be not afraid, the father proclaimed, as he laid his hand upon the official, calling a grin deep from the clouds of heaven. O oh God in heaven, how surely does a coiled serpent strike! Thus was answered on that day as the man's coat pocket revealed the invention of Tokarev, aimed directly at the father's skull. By God's greater light, however, the serpent was defanged, as a sharp click echoed through the frosted winds, followed by the thunderous silence of thousands of onlookers. Twas only when a child, nigh older than her tenth year, threw a stone into the man's skull it re in return, did a hundred more follow, as the crowd birthed the mob that birthed a lynching. So greatly did the father weep, however, as his fingernails felt the scrapings against the Siberian stone of the ground, and his only warmth remaining flowing down his face, from his face, from his eyes, praying to the Almighty that they may find redemption and lay down their thirst of angered blood. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Oh, we got political power and stability. Well, God will see to justice. We'll put it like that. Revitalize the faith? That'd be kind of cool. Oh, we actually lose political power. That's not cool. Let my people go, which we did last time. Do away with Lenin's cult. Vindicate the virtuous. I want to get industrial equipment, societal development more quickly. Let's see. Stability. I love stability. The Haman of Amur. The Belshazzar. I, I, I gotta go with this one first. So as much as I love equipment, poverty is just my thing right now. The Harbinger of Reaction. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelations, Revelations 3.20. It is written, With arrogance they will threaten oppression. For a thousand years and more, the Russian people have lived as strangers in their own land. The peasants knelt before a crown, a red star, and then a thousand variants of foreign ideology and paperback tyranny. The peasantry who sho shouldered Russia's burdens groaned and knelt. Vazd, king, all the same in the demands for submission, and as the villages innumerable and unnamed cried out to God, they prayed for the cup dripping with blood to be removed. God has answered his people. His answer is Father Alexander Men. As the Hobbin warlords fight their petty battles, the ground beneath them quakes, the air fills with whispers of local revolt and grain quotas burnt wholesale, as of roads that are there one day with Nevea the next. The Holy Spirit moves upon the earth once more. The captives are freed. The wounded healed. Just as promised, and vengeance deliver. Let all those who resist this pray for their souls. For the Father alone de delivers. We shall only execute his word. Awesome. We have 13 political power because we must integrate other parts of the former territory of our former enemies. Which is now our territory, which is great. And boy, this is lagging pretty gosh darn hard. Okay, there we go. I wonder what happened. Maybe... Victory for the Democrazia Cristiana. Oh, boy. The first democratic elections for Italy. And the Siberian Black Army unifies Central Siberia. Well, I'll be honest. This is I've never fought these guys before. I've never fought the Siberian Free Territory. So, cool. And the Haman of Amor's Gain as well as the Serpent of Magadan. Cool. If you want to read about the Serpent of Magadan, there you go. We've got 15% more war support, which is nice. The Haman of Amur gave us even more war support. And the Belshazzar of Chita also gave us, guess what, more war support. The Justice of the Commoners. 
Do not be partial to the poor or deferential to the great. In righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. Levit Leviticus 19.50 The fool says in his heart that there is no God. Only the blind, however, can deny that his touch heals. Through the intensive work of our priests, the church we are building has taken on the burdens of social work and redevelopment. And through God's grace, we have built a lighthouse in the lands that we were given. We will use these eccles ecclesiastical structures to rebuild that which was marred by the touch of the Tsar's tyranny, distributing the fruits of inequality to the oppressed and powerless. Let no man stand before us and say that we folded our hands, waiting for the Savior to descend. We will begin his work here now, and it shall be beautiful in its own right. Absolutely. Oh, wow. We don't get a lot of um political power now, do we? Point zero one. That's because we're integrating Baratia and Chita at the current moment, which eh, point zero one. At least we're scavenging for loot. Even though I'm not really sure what else we can do for loot at this point. We got a lot of regional development that we could do. Well, I wish we could do. But um Yeah, I don't think we can really do anything about that right now. Vyaka's looking not too bad. Samara's actually they got entangled, we'll say it like that. But we have a cup of coffee here. Gracious, religious, divine coffee to keep us nice and warm in these cold days of August and September. <laughs> and 65. Well, at least we got plenty of manpower. Also, I did convert some of our divisions over. Hmm. The Indonesian War. I converted these guys under Vladimir to become 20 combat with infantry divisions. Just because we like light infantry. Light infantry is cool. But... This infantry is just a bit better. So we'll train them soon enough and work with them. Stability, political power, he who is maddened. Nullify negotiations. Expel the moneylenders. Now listen, you rich. Weep and wail for the calamities that shall befall you. James 5.1 Your wealth has become corroded. Your garments mothy and your gold and silver rusted. That rust a testament upon you like a fire that will consume your flesh. For you have hoarded treasure in the last days. Behold, the pay that you stole from the workers of the fields cry out. And that the sounds of the cries is heard by the Lord of hosts. These are the words of the Lord, and we shall obey. For those who profited off the sufferings of the Russian people, the mosquitoes drinking and feasting in the ulcers and wounds of the peasants, they will wish for the cleansing embrace of fire so merciful and swift compared to the work of our hands. And when we are finished, we shall purge them all of, from our lands. A great wave of human vermin who once called themselves bankers, arms dealers, and usurpers. And, the test, and their testimony, they will find a great final redemption. Perhaps he, in his mercy, can grant what we cannot release. And we get a civilian factory. Very nice. Also, we have this stuff, too. We have a small deficit, which actually is not bad. This is actually, that type of deficit is not bad compared to what we've I've seen in the past with other warlord nations. But we still can't make anything. Oh, man. And that's probably because, actually this, uh, let me explain first. This is because we've overextended administration probably. Which is interesting because usually when you become a regional power, your focus tree changes. But it hasn't changed for us, which is good, but hopefully... There's content after this, which there should be. Looks like Borman isn't doing that great. Hopefully Goring, like I said in the last episode, should win. But we'll see what happens. Oh, England. Wow. Harold Wilson. Former consensus, huh? Was not expecting that. And I really wasn't expecting demo democracy in Italy, so. <clears throat> Moto, the progressive firebrand. Expel the money lenders. Declining trade, huh? Well, that's not good. That's really not good, actually. Holy cow. Wow, I need to play this Italy someday. Someday, someday, someday. Actually, for you guys, let's go and train you guys. Resource-wise or equipment-wise, I always say resources. We're doing pretty well since we captured all the, the all the equipment from the last, you know, couple wars. We're kind of doing okay. Which actually, I might convert these guys too as well. So, all right. Next up, let's see. End to the Pharisees. More stability, which actually is not bad. More stability over here too. So we have one, two, three, four versus one, two, three. Let's get stability faster than finish these guys off first. Uh. Let's lose political power just because we might as well. Revitalizing the faith. I hate. I reject your feasts. Your solemn gatherings are a stench unto my nostrils. Amos 521. Even before the Tsar fell to the Bolshevik gunfire and the Bolsheviks in return to German fury. The church that sustained Russia had fallen far. Masters and priests to deliver them were many, and yet few believed in earnest. The Father has seen this and has determined that the new Jerusalem he is building shall not be the Israel of the kings, doomed to disobedience and disillusion. He shall be the king of God alone, or the kingdom of God alone, and the coronation draws ever nearer. Liturgies shall be made understandable in vernacular speech to the people, and their purpose explained to the hungry souls. The Bible, so long the sole province of priests and their old church, Slavonic, will be translated and distributed to the masses des desperate for a dream. And the wandering priests that once spread the gospel across Russia shall be reborn. 
A final generation of prophets for an age of fresh wonders. As the church rebuilds itself, its walls shining like the sun, this Lord himself shall dwell among them, and victory now as ever belongs to those who bear the cross. We get stability more, which is great. At least maybe we'll get some more political power. We got 0.13. We have finally integrated Baratia, and got maybe a few more factories. Mordral secures Breton leadership. Cool. Baratia is right here. No, down here. Well, this area is Baratia. Cool. Very, very good. Let's see. Uh, there was one other thing I was going to say. I forget exactly. <clears throat> Concerning, I think, our national spirits. But yeah, we do have... I actually boosted up the civilian budget. And it's still, we, we still can't even build stuff, which is nuts. Uh, let's see, what are we going to do next? Military factories? Actually, how's resources looking? Trade? All we need is rubber, so we're doing fine. Let's see. Guns. Ah, an AK-47 in 1958. Don't mind if we do. I love that. Yeah. We're still, we're making good stuff. Revitalize the faith. Good. Oh, wait. End of the Pharisees. Oh, we're about to do that to get stability right now. You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is coming upon you, Matthew 3, 7. The Spirit of the Lord brings freedom, and yet there's those in the former Soviet lands that we have usurped the Spirit of the Lord to break the will of the people. Collaborators, liberation priests, outright traitors to the motherland, only what they have done and what they have failed to do so in his name matters to us. Yet the Lord is forgiving, and perhaps a new path might yet bloom in the desert where... Once there had been none. As the church shapes the Soviet lands anew, these wayward servants will begin their t ten talents and told to make them count. We will incorporate them into our administration as corrective sentences, and their hands and feet will be first to the tiller of public service. The workers, after all, are few. Why make enemies of those we could use to spread the good news? As we pray with them, we will keep one eye open and one ear to the ground. The kingdom we are building here is vast as our Lord is kind, but it has no room for those who would turn traitor again. Very, very good. Alrighty, tidy. We are making some APCs, but we need rubber for that. Uh, maybe I put did put some tanks on here. You know what? Hmm. What are we researching? Horizontal stuff, combined operations, AK-47s, light aircraft, helicopters. We have no helicopters. It's 65. Yeah, I want to use or play as a Russian unifier that uses helicopters, but I think I might wait. I think I might wait and not do it in this campaign, just because we're already in 65. If we want to use helicopters, we should probably research it pretty much almost immediately. Because it, it takes a while to build helicopters. Go figure, you know. Helicopters take a while to build. Are you guys still killing each other? Oh no, Hedrick is not dead. He's still in Luxembourg. Cool. And then to the Pharisees. And here we need one of the following. Uh, punishment of the Leviathan of the day, but remember no, no render unto Tsars. Well, let's get some more political power. Why not? Because you have defied my sanctuary with your abominable images and practices, I will myself belittle you. I will neither pity nor spare you, Ezekiel 5.11. There's nothing more contemptuous in the scriptures than those who have suborned, uh, suborned the gospel of Christ. Not for nothing is the name of Judas, who sold the Savior to the Romans for a pittance, universally condemned. And we found plenty of modern Judases in the land of Amur, priests who have wholeheartedly sworn allegiance to the fascist ideal. They have been replaced, or have replaced, the Holy Communion with the boot polish of their oppressors. We must take action to cleanse the land of the church. This land of the church, which stood by and approved of its suffering, and re-educated its priests. What we cannot save, we shall cast into the fire. Perhaps God, in a fit of mercy, will rescue his own where we have failed. We get political power and more stability, which we want to become a very, 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 very stable nation. And now we get 0.27, not bad. Can we actually make anything? We still cannot. Big sadness. Actually, how strong is the Siberian Free Territory? They got plenty of manpower like us. More factories than us. They only have 8 to 12 divisions, which actually, we have more than them. Go figure. You guys are still training, which is fine. I'm going to take a few guys. And, oh, actually, you know what? If there's only two of you light infantry, we like that template. So, I'm going to convert you guys immediately. Good. And... Normal infantry. There we go. Cool. Next up after this, we should probably do end of the princes. And in the days of those kingdoms, the God of heaven shall build a kingdom that shall neither be destroyed nor left uh, to another. It will crush all the other kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it itself will endure forever. Daniel 2.44. Uh, uh, my apologies. I thought we could do this first. I'll come back to this in just a little bit. My bad. Actually, what do we need? Oh, we did one all of the three. One, two, three. We need you on the right side now. Delay deliverance. 
Oh, well, no render under Tsars first. Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot sitting upon the waters, with whom the kings of the earth fornicated, their citizens made merry. Re Revelations 17, 1 2. Babylon yesterday, Rome today, cheated tomorrow. All turned away from the living God when it suited them. All harnessed or harassed the church in the name of political necessity. All wore their crowns in the firm, unshakable belief that they would never be taken away. And yet God in his wisdom had made the heavens tremble and the earth break from, um, from, them, from under them all. If we redistribute the fruits of this petty monarchy to the people, we will make an example of the Tsar Mikhail. The wounds he has helped deliver for the white Russians might yet be healed, given time in the Lord's will. Until then, only justice remains to be done. My apologies about that. I thought I had finished, uh, did all the requirements for that one book, so I wanted to really get to it, so. You know what? Screw it. You guys are switching over to you. Cool. No more of this. No more of that. No more of this. And that is good. And you know what? We'll get pop these guys out, but that'll be the last line here. There you go. That should, that should... Hey! That should be good. Uh, let's continue integrating. As much as I want to do this stuff, we really need to integrate places. Let's do it. Very good. And now we have 0 0.03 political power day. Yeah, playing as the Divine Man of Siberia, is, it just feels like we're trying to catch up to other nations right now. But now let's do this. I shall reread this, and we should do okay. And in the days of those kingdoms, the God of Heaven shall build... A kingdom that will, shall neither be destroyed nor left to another. It will crush all of the kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. Daniel 2.44 In the face of our Antiochus Epiphanes, we have destroyed the despoilers of our land. Like Moses, we have celebrated victory in the face of defeat. But now that the Lord has brought us out of the depths, we must study your breath and face what lies ahead with strong hearts and clear heads. Hobbin still struggles with the cult of tyrants, tyrants and the kings that once ruled that area. <clears throat> and with the rampant crime and disorder that brought them into bedding or being we will spare no cost we will withhold not even our own sons in our effort to destroy the last of the despotist followers for we know more than anyone else the prince of peace shall brook no opposition when he comes it is for us to clear the rubble that the temple might shine all the brighter and we get 10 percent more stability which is very good because we have 60 percent which is not bad but still pardoning he who is prisoner thus saith the lord remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them and those who are mistreated, since you are in the body. Our father descended into the land known as Chita once more, shoulder to shoulder to the servants of God Almighty who sought to liberate the revolutionary city from the clutches of men gone mad with power as whispers of a tsar crowned upon a throne crossed the rivers and valleys into our father's ear, ready to liberate the oppressed from a tyrant once more. So greatly did the children of Amalon uh, descend upon the city that day, fighting bravely to secure a new age of justice and prosperity under the watchful eyes of the Lord for this greatly battered land. However, it was in the palace of this falsified emperor's empire that the truth gave way under the light of the, of the Almighty. Abandoned traitors led this land, citing the legal text of warfare and militancy as their gospel and proclaiming an innocent soul as being their leader, one who wept greatly at the bloodshed, calling for his return homes across the great seas. Consolation set forth across all Russians that day. As the soldiers of Amalon collected that band of despots ruling over this land whilst our father so greatly convened with the man that held hostage by his own heritage. Such life was not fit for this man. Such prisonership was no life for any man. And thus, leaving behind a trail of hanged men, did this foreigner once more set sail for his home, so dutifully did he cross the Okhotsk, and then to the Pacific, and finally, after many days of rest, thought and prayer, did this man find himself back into his warm, forgiving home, embracing his family. All this man was able to recount to his friends and loved ones were this text given to him by the Holy Liberator upon the sacred Orthodox Scripture. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, stability, and more political power. Ah, I'm glad we, I'm really actually glad we were able to pardon him. That is good. That is very, very good. At least our society development is going up no matter what. Even though it's not going as much up as I would hope, like to have seen it. And that is okay. But industrial equipment, eight a month, that is a okay with me. I'm going to convert you guys immediately anyways. Civilian budget boost. At this point, is there really any point to do that? So, we can cut the military spending. We have 420. 420? 0.01, nice, uh, for annual deficit before we do that. If I cut this, because we can't even build jack squat right now. So, this is probably a bad idea. You know what, if I, 15% if I, for slashing, so it's 10%, so it's like 100, I'm going to assume it's like 150 million. Even if we did that, we still wouldn't have enough, so. Even if we, and I want to boost it up so we get even more political power right now. The battle for Italy. Could Italy be the tipping point in the Cold War? Well, it could be. Are you guys still killing each other or not? Yeah, they are, but they're not moving at all. Are you guys frozen? It's still the Dutch state over there. Can I send volunteers? Aw. 
end to the princes. Now the kingdom of God is with us. We could do this, but I want to get all these other focuses done so that we can get some more benefits. It only takes like 60 days max. Well, yeah, 60 days. So, on that day, the Lord with a severe sword, great and strong, will punish Leviathan. Isaiah 27.1 The Leviathan, a symbol of powerful, implacable, unplaceable evil. The torturous serpent at the end of time, so too has the Leviathan of our own times racked the lands of the Far East. The serpent that looks in the shadows, the shadow of not armies of generals, but of ideology itself. This beast cannot be fought with sword or spear or chariot, or guns or artillery for the matter. But with the four armor of faith and the sword and shield of God's word, we shall identify those who would seek to poison the minds of our Russian people and root them out of our cities and towns. And where necessary, we shall use overwhelming forces so terrible it will prevent the seed from ever taking root in our ground again. When we are finished with this purification, we shall sanctify the lands we own with a true and lasting religion, one built only on Christ and nothing else. Let it be the new bronze serpent, built to overpower our new plague, and the harbinger of what awaits our enemies, should they fall afoul of us too. Beautiful. Good. Wow, we lost more manpower just because we are um, trying to make more divisions. So we actually have a liberal Kazakhstan. The communists did not win here, but the liberals did. Conservative democracy, very cool. And apparently, we have the West Russian Revolutionary Front led by Tukachevsky. Tukachevsky. Nikolaevich is, is his middle name, very cool. Are we getting more daily army XP? Yes, we are. Fraternal militia is nice. Vologda is still alive somehow. Lvyatka actually beats Samara, wow. Usually it's Samara that does pretty darn well. God, there's so many Russian unifiers, I love it. I love what the devs have done in this for this mod, love it. So many Russian <clears throat> unifiers. <clears throat> the day of deliverance. Great is your mercy for me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of hell. Psalm 80, 86, 13. The fascists of Amor had many enemies. Some were opponents of the fascists from the beginning. Many were were self-created from the endless paranoia of Rodzewski's men, but all have gained a profound hatred of the regime and its wasikas. It now falls upon us to deliver a new message. Here in Amur, God is at long last doing a new work. We shall clear the jails and torture cells of the old regime, inviting them to join the house of God and help rebuild. Even if they refuse, their stories of the madness that transpired in the fetid corners of the city shall forever destroy the power of the fascist grip. God's work does not always take place through the willing, but it shall not be stopped by the he hesitance, notifying he ne who negotiates. Records of the fall of the abominable turned most blessed city of Magadan by the might of the holy God in the year of our Lord, 1965, set down by the scribe Sergius, once a follower of the dark ways of fascism, Matkovsky. It was their seventh hour of the new day when the church bells first rang, awakening the townspeople and beginning preparations for the new day. For both the native Russians and all manner of foreign mercenaries, it was only by the eleventh hour, however, that the sun began to shine across the city and thus give light upon the christened forces of the north. Thus was when every armed man, mercenary and native alike, drew to the city walls, preparing for the potential outbreak of violence that could consume the city and bring ruin to every family inside. It was Makovsky who organized these men as the bright sun shone down upon every potential combatant that day shedding a great light upon the Father, as he drew closer to the gates of Magadan, as he wandered the gates of heaven. Furthermore, it was Makovsky, who marched downwards through the city gates, realizing the sharp truth regarding the bloodbath which had been prophesied to follow for weeks on end now. This was it. The time was now for Magadan to seize hell against, or siege hell against the northern invaders who sought to undo the progress of the local leader, Makovsky. And maybe, just maybe, could he secure for himself a means to escape if everything went according to plan? In the next few hours, should an ocean of blood deep in the Siberian snow, Americans, Germans, South Africans, Russians themselves all found themselves fighting and dying on the gate of Magadan that day, all who, all of whom who had carried the rifle to bear against the shield of Christ that day. Nevertheless, they all found themselves at the mercy of the merciful Lord at that day, with Matkovsky having been cut in a damaged vehicle in a dash to escape the burning city. So great was the Lord that day to provide his mercy to provide a new light of life for the once living Matkovsky to be the scribe Sergius, destined to follow the Father's holy hymn throughout the lands of Russia, for a steadfast love endures forever. Uh, I, I like these events. Kind of cool. And I'm joining with my cat, Binky, who is bathing in the Father's light. God's light. Licking his sinful body. But anyways, uh, after this we shall do Vindicate the Virtuous. He is a Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Revelations 17, 14. The harvest is plentiful, the reapers few. Even now the Father's dominion is besieged with requests from villages seeking the glory of God. Priests have become important accessories between our central administration and the villages they manage, truly a bridge between the coming kingdom and the realm of men. But their abilities are limited by their sheer lack of numbers as well as external pressures. To create a better world, sacrifices must be made. We will create agencies to manage the finances and the laws in the Far East and ensure that these positions are filled solely with those we deem virtuous. There is no room for the complainer, the doubter, and the closest secularist in our new Jerusalem, and certainly not in the highest offices. 
As for those who deem it corruption, or accuse us of marrying power to the church, their courage is well placed, even if their faith is, faith is not. Let the work of our faithful prove itself, and those who are not convinced, well, they who stand not with us stand against us. And how can a house stand divided against itself? Managing he who maddens. Thus saith the Lord, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy towards all people. O Zaya, how great were you to the gifts of gold towards these Russian lands, how daring you were in conquering your own seal, or sea. Never longer, however, could the city be resigned to the likeness of the imperial and the fascist, denying the lordliness of the scripture in exchange for barbarism and butchery. Thus did the father set forth, and in his victories did he claim this aquatic foundation where the wretchedness of demons wrought of fascism lurked across the land, the leader of whom having been brought directly to the father in chains. It was here that such a demon swore upon the Bible of the justice in his actions, denying our father. It was here that such a demon revoked the words of our father, denying him his glory and seeking notions of godlyhood himself. And finally... This is where the demon spat upon the boots of our father, in one final insult, denying our father for the third time. This was when the demon was brought to a private quarter for our father to find counsel with personally. No man listening upon the conversation that occurred that day. Was it the sacrament of confession, followed by holy absolution? Was it the discussion of the philosopher and the poet? Was it the opening up of the gates of heaven upon this miserable soul's shadow? None may know. What I'll remember, however, was the transformation of this demon back into the image of a mere man, a man wrought with grief, awaiting and embracing the noose held in the crowd's hand that day. Thus did the followers of the Almighty whisper that day, were such fates just in the eyes of the Lord, or were the tears of the Father enough to show grave mistakes in their actions? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And for mercy we shall deliver unto Alden. Yeah, I really want to do all this stuff. It really does feel like we're trying to catch up to, the, uh, I guess, Siberian free territory. That's okay. Do away with Lenin's cult. My people, your rulers have mis misled you. They have ruined the course of your paths, Isaiah 3.12. Once a king ruled in Babylon, then in Syria, then in Rome, a spectacle to all the world of power for whom even the mountains quivered. Once there was a golden statue, a beacon of worship, and a faith in the power of a single man. Once there was desolation wrought upon God-fearing and a choice. Worship a man or die the death of a beast. When it came, Russia's time to behold its own terrible king, nearly all bowed in unvoiced fear or in genuine adoration. The kingdom he and his successors reigned over fell quickly, a house of shifting in sands, and yet the broken pedestal remains a platform for all manner of vermin to feed upon the hopes of the motherland. His name is still whispered, even in the lands burnt over by our priesthood, a name to terrify and to awe. Lenin, Lenin, Vladimir Lenin. Christ alone stands as a judge of man. A judge of men. It is time we purge the most recent claimant of that title from the hearts of our people, and then the kingdom, the power and glory shall truly be his now and forevermore. Beautiful. Hey, we oh my goodness, we actually have free military factories. Yakutia, you are the final one we must integrate into our new holy lands. Factories, yeah, APCs, tanks, that's going to take a while to do. We need more artillery, that is fine with me. Let's actually boost them up. We can lower that for now. We'll come back down here and do that, just in case. Loads of artillery. And then you know what? We're going to do loads. Quite a bit amount of fighters and lots of casts. Tanks, we'll use tanks hopefully by the end of this campaign. I, there's no promises, of course, but still. Ooh, if we have doing that more, we still can't build. God dang it, we gotta get through this focus tree quickly, just so that we can get to uh, the focuses that reduce the strain on our budget. And the kingdom of God is within us. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not sleep, all sleep, but we shall all be changed. One Corinthians fifteen fifty one. We look unto our bloody hands, and if the earth splatter with our sorrows as dew upon the morning grass, we look at the cities that now ring with joyous prayer, where there was only silence. At the priests we have birthed anew into a better calling. We whisper in a voice as tired as it is, as it is jubilant, one word, Telestia, to, to, to test less time. It is finished. There is much left even now to be done, but God commands us to look inward, not outward, for fresh revelation of his will. God has granted us the destruction of our enemies, and now it is our duty to restrain his willful flocks into fresh obedience and joy. And the Father himself speaks, with a strange fire in his eyes of the new things that can be done in the villages, so full of youth and so ready to change. We shall watch and wait, trimming the wicks night after night, and when the time comes, we will be ready. Proselytizing he who protests. Thus saith the Lord. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. High above did the banner of the kingdom of God on earth fly upon the march into the city of Ulan Ud, where a holiness has been disavowed and led instead by the virtues of a revolution, a revolution guided by man and man alone. So did the Father climb the great steps into Odegetrievsky Cathedral, where he ordered the defeated to meet them. 
So here in the Greek Cathedral of Our Lady of Smolensk, where our Lord find those who stood defiant against the orders of our Lord, but punish the young sailor whose eyes met him in the upper corridors. Rather, the goldenness of respects were given, and as incense were burned and the kettles, candles lit in honor of the Almighty, this child sought not the redemption towards God in heaven, or rather, he sought a guarantee for the rights of the people, his people, the happiness of his people, and the lives of his people. Honored was his soul despite damnation, and virtuous was his mission. How could one claim justice in the death of such a noble soul, willing to do all of God's work, shedding his name? It was his mighty wisdom that the father delivered the sailor's child penance, served his court as servant of the good Lord, and spread the good news and devotion of to God wherever the father himself went. Surely, however, did the vessel of God recognize an utter lack of faith despite his acceptance of the absolution. Nevertheless, so great did the father witness his carrying out of good acts across the people of Russia as he would have wanted all along. The unwilling made a hole. Made whole. A hole? Not a hole, but made whole. Oh, look at that. What can we do here? Invest in construction? Maybe uh, let's take a look. Returning expatriates? We're kind of good right now. Binky, you would like to leave my room? You know what? We have 61%. I'm going to grab initiate pro, pro propaganda programs so we get more stability. And even though we don't need more war support, I think the stability was probably worth it. Come on, buddy. My apologies. My cat wanted to leave the room. So we want more stability, and then we shall really, really begin hopefully doing a lot more of this stuff. And let's speed it up just a little bit more. And then we shall be with a new focus. Do we actually have enough we can build stuff? Oh, we don't have enough stuff yet. God dang it. Oh, no. My, my bad. No, don't take the Lord's name in vain. God bless the time that we have together. Because even though we can't build anything, or at least build new factories, at least we can build new guns. God willing. Now, that's a case. We've already upgraded our infantry, which is great. What about our motorized? Do we have enough motorized equipment? I believe I did put some trucks on. Yes, we. Yes, I did. We got plenty of motorized. So, the kingdom of God is within us. It was not through the lackadaisical, sullen look upon the world that the Lord was able to forge the majesty of creation. Rather, it was by his almighty golden hand, willing to bring light and life to all plants, all animals, and all of mankind, that he was able to bring about such a perfectly imperfect universe in this way. It is through the almighty work of our Father, the vessel of our God, that we are able to find ourselves the heroic leaders of this great expanse, giving all in Russia a holy light to look upon for guidance and salvation in the shadow of these dark times. Twas upon the frosted crystal of the high cathedral that our Father was looked upon the fruit of his people upon the bank of the Amalam. The lost, the abandoned, the weak, transformed under the light of heaven into the almighty soldiers of the only begotten Son, born forth into a fractured world to bring forth the kingdom of God to earth once more, as foretold in the book of Revelation. O oh, words of prophets hath not foretold of the blessed acts our Father would lead us through, from the disposal of sinful despot to the assimilation <clears throat> of a new former land of misguided souls into our mighty dominion. Only by the mighty spirit of Emmanuel shall we learn of prestige, power, and piety destined to us by our Lord. <clears throat> Our father, absorbing the great and terrible deeds performed by his leadership, rested. He thought clearly upon a single image, rumination in his head, or ruminating in his head since the great journey started so long ago, that of the rainbow, not prophetic nor apocalyptic scriptures, gouging for reclamation and vindication, but the truest showcase of God, our father, could muster in his mind, beautiful, awe-inspiring, and loving, and yet on looking at the fire profusing from his followers' words and deeds, what would come next for him in this world? A time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Finally, we are now at the regional tree. Oh, look at the fruits of the labor. A new sermon. Ooh, more political power. We could probably really use that. Yeah, that's the only we, we can do. A new sermon. And bl God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Genesis 9, 1. In the days that followed creation, the Lord saw that the corruption had seeped into mankind's every act, and that violence infested the dominions or domains that they inhabit like an inconsolable plague. So great was his regret that he purged the earth of its creatures with forty days and nights of rain. None were spared from judgment except a man of faith and his family, forward, forewarned into building a great ark. <clears throat> When the water subsided, and the dove returned with an olive leaf, he and his descended the mountains, he and his descended the mountains of Arat, Ararat, to the people of a cleansed world anew. From the heights of Yakutsk did father men too behold the kingdom he had built, and he sees the destruction events by decades of miserable war, but he has seen also the very first verdant blooms of a Rodina reborn, its many sins washed away by baptismal fire gouts, propelled by the guns of the flock. Not unlike the deluge that had visited the world when it was young. If God sees in him a modern Noah for his kingdom, then the Lord shall commit to the onerous burden with fervor and zeal. Good. A new sermon. Let's use some motorized artillery because we can. 
Even though it costs more artillery, that's kind of okay. We want to hit him hard, hard, hard. Uh, that should really bring up your soft attack. Yeah, that's not bad. Military police. I might take off military police. Just because it's okay. You actually get more defense, which is nice. More breakthrough, more soft attack. But you might be able to replace it with more artillery, so. That'd probably be worth it. Now we're out of artillery, but whatever. Vyatka. Actually, Vyatka. Oh, man. Nice job, Vyatka. A new sermon. Ooh, 0.27. That's not very good. After that, what are we going to do? A Christ-like life. Re revelations of the past. Progress through tradition. Hold on. Let's pause it real quick. We lose, stability. We lose political power for more stability. Gender equality. Open arms for all. Monthly population goes up. Academic change goes up. We lose some poverty gain, though. Stand against chauvinism. Ooh. Love for the faithless. We lose quite a bit of political power. Recruitable population goes up by 50%. Total service equality. Wow. Roots is strain. None... Oh, my goodness. Let none go hungry. Agriculture and poverty. Let none go naked. Poverty, poverty, or agriculture and industrial equipment. Industrial equipment is probably the one we want to go, really go for. Communal farming. Poverty and agriculture. Yeah, that one's definitely better. Communal farming. Love thy neighbor. Mm, outlawed slavery. What? Hmm. More political power and stability. Christ-like life. Agricultural improvement. Uh, communal stuff. Public education. Exalt the poor. Poverty. We're really focused on poverty, which mm, I like. Well, I don't like poverty, but you know, whatever. We'll do revelations of the past. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching and for for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16. The 66 books that comprise of Bibles from Genesis to Revelation. <clears throat> Contains the Lord God's words, His wisdom and insight, precedence no matter that age. Every problem modern man has devised for himself has some form of solution, and more often than not, our solutions are solutions ascertained through close examination of gospel. Today, the laity enter an age of reform and revolution. Christ deliberated his words for both the Father, men, as well as his intercessor, has taken intercessor, has taken parsing through the every iota of the Bible's text to glean reforms and revolutionary thought as is heavy burdensome duty. For the kingdom of God on earth must have sturdy foundations that it may last a thousand years, ever awaiting his triumphant return. Now, this doesn't help reduce our administrative burden, but I want to get this <clears throat> societal development done as fast as possible. Now, the division, don't mind if we do. The Sermon of the Prisoners. Thus saith the gospel according to Luke. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. <coughs> Excuse me. How corrupted must one's souls be to deserve imprisonment? Ought a school child, failing an exam from stress, be thrown into the Siberian depths for the failures of his labor? Brothers and sisters, I say to you today that coal-filled depths of the slave camp, built to forge railroads and produce riches with which none may keep, Houses not criminals, but mistreated brothers and sisters, just like you or I. Imagine a, re imagine a reckless, smiling child falling deep into the depths of the lake of Baikal. Would it be our duty as parents to children of this world to hold the child under, to allow the frostbite and drowning to suffice as punishment for his mistakes? Would it not be, or would it not be, the right to fight for the child, for our child, to rescue him and ensure his soul is secured in his right, and aid him to become better throughout all his efforts? This is how we ought to know how we must treat these fallen men who frozen in their own lake by call for so long, as the suit has burned their lungs and the calluses develop their envelop their hands. Let them be in the midst of you or me, and we shall lead them to a life anew. It was then that all manner of men, women, and child set forth to labor into the depths of Amurlag. No longer slaves breaking rocks at the crack of the whip. No, these were God's chosen, freeing and releasing those brothers and sisters deemed dangerous by tyrants long past, and allowing them to become children of the Lord. Amen. And we have enough political power, finally. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Poverty relief. Uh, no, let's do f hire foreign instructors. That one's really, really good to do. Actually, you know what? We're going to wait. We're going to wait so we can do two at once. Two at once. Because so, we will we will lose some political power. And, yeah, there we go. Let's do that one. So we can't do prioritize stuff. And which one are we doing the weakest? Actually, power tools. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we gotta do equipment right now. We gotta boost that up as fast as possible. Equipment will slowly improve. Good. Obviously, um, I want to shoot for all that stuff anyways. 600 million in terms of deficit. Whatever. Totally fine. Hmm. Good. Let them, let them kill each other for now. Slash it. Civilian budget boost. That's fine. Even more. Even more. Let's grab this one. Horizontal industrial organization. More factory output. Max factories in the state. Uh, yeah. We might as well. Because then we'll do this one too. 
Can we at least produce something? Please. Production. Construction. Oh, God. Uh, oh, my, I'm not oh, God. Uh, oh, God, please help us in our time of need. There we go. Yep. I like this one. Let none go naked. Industrial equipment. We really want to help out. But since we're already focusing on that quite a bit, and as much as I want to get through that as fast as possible, I think we're going to go let none go, go hungry. Let's focus on agriculture. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who se shall seek him, praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. Psalm 2226. The histories of our motherland epitomizes the essence of paradoxes. The empire of the Tsars were largest in the known world, yet proved more feeble than an emas emaciated octogenarian in the face of Germany. Its priests called her holy, yet their places were left unheard when the false prophet Lenin enticed the people into empire-shattering revolt. Russia herself abounded with more farmland and pasture than any other empire in history, save the Mongols, and yet much of her people lived day to day with hunger's specter looming over their thoughts. So did the father declare, if Christ our Lord has fed a mountain with two fishes and five loaves of bread, then imagine how many stomachs Russia's bounty mass can feed. Now we're going to go do this one because even though we might have naked people, is it better to be hungry or to be, you know, filled fill, filled with food and naked or clothed and starving? Probably we want to feed the masses. Probably. There's no guarantee. But how can people do well if they are hungry? They might be naked, which could cause problems, especially if you're working in a factory or making bacon. But let their bellies be filled with food. 600, not bad, not bad. Really not concerned about that at all too much. 0.15 a day, I'm a little bit more concerned about that one. Yeah, that's not very good for us. We have 17 divisions though. That's pretty good, I would say. Let none go hungry. And then communal farming, agriculture. Yeah, this one's just not as good, it seems like. Communal farming. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. 1 Corinthians 3.8 Here our Lord speak and digest his words as we do with our daily bread. The commandment he has given is simple and plain. A man who tills the soils neither his fellow tiller and waterers greater nor less, for they all harvest the Lord's God's blessings either way. A pity that the world's other nations profane his teachings by subordinating the humble farmer to task makers or task masters, giving him a pittance of what his harvest is worth, but not the kingdom of heaven. No. Father men, lacks patience for the rule of the Pharaoh. Every village in Russia shall have farms for themselves, first and foremost, tilled by equals first and foremost. Good, good, good. None shall go hungry. Agriculture is improving. Four month, as well as poverty, is four month, which is actually minus almost 30. Holy cow, that's really not good. And then we shall follow up with love thy neighbor. We change slavery law to outlaw slavery, more stability, rehabilitation with, and reduces administrative strain. And this commandment we have we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. 1 John 4, 21. Not for nothing was Christ our Lord's reprimand of unjust treatment entitled the Golden Rule. Peace has ever proved itself elusive in the affairs of mortal men, regardless of how much our hearts desire it. Thus we honor his invocation for peace by upholding not only its letter, but also its implied co consequent. To love thy neighbor as we desire to be loved, that peace comes first to mind even amid disagreements. There is no realm on earth better able to apply this divine precept than the kingdom of heaven. Father, men shall make it so, no matter what. Oh, this would become rehabilitative. Ooh, Angola is at war. War is hellacious. And we finally start to reduce the administrative administrative, administrative strain on our state. My apologies for my speech. We're only 40 minutes into this video, and my speech is somewhat slurred. But blessed is he who owns an AK-47. Actually, we should probably get some better motorized, too. Wow. So, the Ural Military District is unified with Sverdlovsk leading the way. Across I feel like, let's go ahead and do that just because... Oh, this, this, they do that too over here. Friendship between peoples, all one in heaven. Let's do that, a Christ-like life. <clears throat> Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Proverbs 38. It is a story as old as the prophets. Men form a covenant with the Lord, partake in the blessings he bestowed, and stray their thoughts from his precepts by the generation. God's secret words were left to ring fruitless and hollow as it faithful debased themselves with vice, and piety and mortal sin. At its terminus is a civilization so advanced in its rot as to taint ever groundwater beneath bedrock. To divorce they who dwell above the Lord, render their spirits fully deaf. Upon these ver personages did our vengeful lord levy his terrible swift vengeance. Such was the fate which befell Sodom and Gomorrah of Nineveh, Tyre, and Babylon, and at present of the motherland. This cycle ends here, decrees the father for all the subjects within his kingdom on earth, shall hereto live as Christ our lord has, simply, humbly, and gregariously.
And there goes the People's Republic of Mag Magnet Gorosk. And look at that. Improved infantry rifles. Beautiful. Can we build any more? Anything at all? No, we cannot. Big sad. We need more artillery. Oh boy. A Christ like life. A rural ideal. Agriculture will continue to improve. Um, society rate, society, poverty, poverty, poverty. A rural idea, why not? The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. Genesis 2.15 It is no coincidence that the great men of scripture were of bucolic stock, farmers, shepherds, fishmongers, for beyond the city's comforts lie a world where God's temperament alone decides the fortunes men accrue. Plying a trade involving his creation, so want to plenty one season and meagerness the next. S oft instills an appreciation for the firm hand his he plays over our lives, and from there bl blossoms forth faith as unshakable as stone. That he has chosen the distant east for the Father's ordained undertaking speaks much of his awe-inspiring prescience. Pre Here squanderous cities are sparse, while farmland, pasture, and rivers are displayed across this expanse like grass and verdant rolling hills. These climes lend well to simple communes where farmers can till their lands and honor God undisturbed, just as he intended. And we shall live a Christ-like life, with Father Men leading us. Beautiful. We want more political power. Oh, we can invest in more construction. Yes, don't mind if we do. Slash that. Very good. Ah, we can finally make one civilian factory. Oh, look at that. We finally can make more. Yes, a thousand times. Yes, my friends. And to do this, we need a family is... A village is a family. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Hebrews 2.11. So it was written, They who provide not only for their family have made unbelievers of themselves. The Lord taught us this, so that we may care for our fellow man, for are we not all sons and daughters of Abraham our father, no matter our origins and conditions? But alas, like the invitees from our Lord's Christ parables, modern man chose to excuse themselves from charity by restricting their family to close kin. The lengths he traveled to satisfy the selfishness would have driven our Lord Christ to genuine anger. The Father rejects these hypocr hypocrisies out of hand. Henceforth all communes within God's kingdom shall, both in law and spirit, and without regard for our ancestry and progeny, progeny, shall become each other's kin. Thus will every village grow into a great banquet from which all brothers and sisters in Christ can partake. Even the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, we get stability. We get more libertarian socialism, and we get more daily pickle power by allowing public meetings. The rural ideal. Don't mind if we do. Four. Looking good? That's good. That's looking pretty good. <clears throat> and then we shall do the holy cities. Perhaps exalt the poor. High income weighted. We lose political power, which I don't like. We need to get more income, but still. Community upbringings, not bad. Public education, illegal child labor, what are you talking about? The holy cities. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or nor destruction within your borders. But you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Isaiah 60, 18. The Lord God scarcely offers no reason in his interventions on the affairs of men, and his reasons for smiting Sodom and Gomorrah is numbered a thousandfold. Never mind the perversions its inhabitants harbored for the angels whom Lot sheltered, but whether through man's own foibles or some flaw inherent in centers of civilization, sin suffused with the twin cities like a sickly miasma, miasma, encouraging further depravities in an endless cycle of damnation. The lay faithful, the, the lay faithful fear for another Sodom so soon after liberation, whether in its characters or its fate. While Father Man shares their fears, he is also unwilling to write off the Rodina cities as lost causes. Instead, he envisions refurbishments which assist Russia's cities in fulfill their denizens' spiritual and material needs without compromising overmuch on commerce and industry. Houses for all, spacious plazas, and markets, lush parks bestriding a humble church. These are only a fraction of the ideas the Father has in mind for the new Jerusalem that will soon arise from Siberia's ashes. Blessed is he who follows the Lord. Construction speed. Well, we shall do another focus as well. Communal upbringings. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, to not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Hebrews 10, 24-25 Thus it is written, Our Lord God commands us to look for one another as a father looks for his children, or his siblings looking for a sibling. Father men considers applying this tenet in a more literal sense. Because of the chaos and discord that engulf Russia, our motherland is replete, or replete with villages without villagers, empty husks that do nothing but remind the passerby of our national tragedy. These may be peopled again, but with strangers from throughout Russia the Russian Far East, rather than kin and close neighbors. In effect, much of Russia's countryside has been uh, swept clean in the vineyards of Apocalypse. The Father sees tragedy, but also opportunity. Communities where every man is each other's brother. Every man fathers to each other's sons may yet arise from Russia's ashes. I wish we should complete that very soon. Once we do infantry weapon improvements, six. 
community upbringings. I don't like losing political power because we already don't have that much. So, all one in heaven. We've done the center one. We've done this one. And I want to do a truly holy Russia as fast as possible. So, And down here, progress with tradition. Very cool. We almost have a 0.51 a day. Not bad. The Lord has blessed us once again. Improve worker training, scientific research, allocate education funding, poverty relief. I really want to do poverty relief stuff, so there we go. 774. Construction is still at 4. So be it. Next up, exalt the poor. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthews 5 3. My apologies, we gotta click on this one next, real quick. Very good. So says our Lord God. A camel can easier slip through the eye, the needle eye, than a rich man can seek passage through heaven's gates. Consider that the destitute have little else to present before Peter the Apostle besides their stolen deeds, whereas every talent of gold a wealthy departed has accumulated will be scrutinized for their origins. Rome's past statesmen may be fond of regurgitating the saying that money doesn't stink. The crassuses of today's eagle. Ego. Uh, my apologies. Of crassuses of today's age, however, will dismayingly realize that the Lord and his hosts have keener senses than mortal men. To lighten their spiritual burdens and conscience, Father Man has taken upon himself yet another burdensome task, lightening, lightening the purses of the wealthy men who now live within the kingdom. The proceeds thereof shall be put to use, uplifting the nameless multitudes that enjoying neither sustenance nor shelter up until now. And better poverty rate. Good. Better industrial equipment. The economy is doing great, and new reforms in industrial subsidizing has resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed in by imperfect human hands. Industry continues her march forward. These were a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and a renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. <clears throat> Excellent. 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 A thousand times excellent. For the Lord, we shall have better equipment. We are almost done with this, and we shall exalt the pole. Beautiful. Still four, not bad. 784, not great, but not bad either. Research should be done within 19 days, 18 days. Ooh. We have 20 days left, so we shall wait to do the next focus then. Soldiers looking pretty good. Excuse me. Oof. So basically, there will be four contenders for Russia. The West Siberian Revolutionary Front, the Ural Military District, and Siberian Free Territory, and then us. Of course, we have Kazakhstan, but they'll probably go bye-bye. Actually, the Ural Military District, led by Batov, has quite a few divisions. More than us. And these guys have been making more divisions as well, which is not good. Were we missing artillery? Yes, we are. We're going to need even more of them. Military austerity. I know I should probably not be doing that, but whatever. 1.43 in debt, not good. But no matter, we shall improve it later. There shall be time. Industrial horizontal stuff, and then we'll grab batch production methods for even more output and base and cap and good stuff like that. Cool. And all one in heaven. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there will be no divisions among you, but that you will be united in the same mind and same judgment. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. The Lord's clarion call resounded throughout mountains and valleys, plains and cities, crags and seashores, and all other manners of terrain. No corner on earth was spared its ringing invocations. As it was said, many were called, few were chosen. So did much of the world in its sorry sins shun the Lord God's beckoning. Those few who did belong to every nation, race, profession, and standing, rich and poor, urban and rural, these names fell by the wayside when our eyes were all drawn to the New Jerusalem in Russia, ordained by the Lord their maker all. Forever, forever, if the Father has anything to say. Soon other corners shall bear their hearts to the Lord's warm, holy light. But for now, let us work together to suffuse it, suffuse it throughout all of Russia. Political power and reduce our administrative strain, which will be good to do. Oof, that does not feel good. And we actually get more stability if we do that too, so. 0.36 political power day, so be it. We're going to invest even more in the budget. We're going to build, 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 build. The more we build now, the better it'll be later on. <clears throat> Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, artillery is actually not too bad. 1.6 every day, even though we slash the military budget. That is not bad. All one in heaven. And when is the next research done? In about less than two months, which is fine. And we shall do it progress through, through, through tradition. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6, 2. So it is written, man deceives himself. Or deceives himself when he thinks himself something which he is not. Do not pray or fall prey to the lies spread by those who claim they have weathered the life's ordeals they're lonesome. 
for they deceive themselves and the Lord most of all. Mankind is not a scattering of islands left to fend the tides of itself. Rather, it is a con continent that at its best defies even nature's wrath. Through this tradition of God blossoms progress, which the self-proclaimed developed nations of both West and East barely grasp even now. It is up to the Father and his flock to see it take root in the Rodina. Political power gain goes down, but we get more stability, but also reduces the administrative strain on the budget. And we have reduced strain, and now we have more political power to use and spend with. Worker construction. The bonus industry, I kind of like that one. We get more industrial expertise, which is okay. We're really focusing on agriculture. How far are we along with agriculture, actually? Basic mechanization? Modern mechani- You know what? Let's, we're going to really, really hammer home agriculture, because I'm not sure any other nation that can. So let's go ahead and try that. Why not? Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely illustrious. 35 days? Not bad. And we should do the next one. Empower our mothers and sisters. Well, we... Uh, yes, academic base goes up, as well as... Oh, fraternal militias are gone. That's sad. And industrial expertise goes up as well. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruits of her hands, and her, let her works praise her in the gates. Proverbs 31, 30 to 31. When the God the Father fashioned Eve out of Adam, he envisioned for the first man a helper. Sex and creeds throughout history have taken this teaching from the book of Genesis as cause to reduce the fair sex into their husband's breasts of burden. Father man sees differently. Through contemplation and careful reading, he is convinced the truth. The Lord created no simple helper for Adam, else he would have ignored all pretense and created the perfect beast. No, he instead created a companion with whom to experience his creations. Yet each has a different role set about, or set about by their physiques. Yet they are no less each other's equal than the Lord God is their father. How far we have fallen from the garden if all the world's people subverted his earliest teaching so. But now is always a good time to begin our travels to redemption's rocky paths. We get less monthly population, we get more recruitable population. Factory, we lose stability, but we do get more output for factories and dockyards, which is a good thing. And we have 21 days for that, and we will have a better weaponry very soon, which is a blessing. A very strong, strong blessing. Nine, good, even better. Even best, even more. I, I know, like early on, like when I was playing this game, or, you know, the mod, I did not want as much debt as possible, and I kept hounding it down, which we will do. But later on, when we have a bigger industry and we can manage it a little bit more effectively, we're looking for efficiency and effectiveness. For now, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and choose... Ooh, we could choose that one. Ooh, how about a land auction? Let's, do, let's try to finish up our land auction more quickly. Because if we get to war, we want to be ready. Open arms for all. We lose stability, get more monthly population. We lose political power, more monthly population. We actually hurt our poverty, but help other things out. Stand against chauvinism. And I'll do that one. So, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female, for you are all one Christ Jesus. Galatians 3.28 Cast aside your pride, O sons of Abraham, for the Lord frowns upon strife between siblings. Cast aside your jealousy, O daughters of Israel, for they bring nothing but their hearts and souls before you. Cast aside your hatred, O chosen of God, for his kingdom brooks no enmities, enmities amongst his children. Holy Siberia shall welcome these different-minded peoples as prodigal sons and daughters, like Christ our Lord welcomes us to his bosom. Woe betide those who subvert the will of God. And another division. Shall we? Yes, we shall. Do we have any claims that we may use to further God's justice? For the Lord said, I bless this wing of close air support planes. Or something close, similar to that. Did this not go up? Cool, that's fine. That is fine. They can have a little bit of forgiveness as well. And then open arms for all. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and extort, or exhort, with a complete patience and teachings. 2 Timothy 4, 1-2. Before Christ our Lord cast us into the four corners to fulfill our great commission, he commanded all who claim to be his faithful with certain absolutes they must uphold. Patience ranks at the forefront of these tenets. After all, divergences in thought and practice among God's many Fold peoples are inevitabilities, like sunrise and sunset, to castigate the different-minded for their very being is akin to accusing a faithful man of heresy for sustaining themselves with loaves of bread rather than the word of God alone. It is with this guided spirit that the Father, in his capacity as God's ordained intercessor, decrees the projection of all faiths under his ever-present watch, the Jews, Muslims, and pagans, the thousand others that had sprung forth after creation. Heaven has all eternity to await their adherents' return. Until then, the fleeting kingdom on earth shall shelter them to its utmost. And we shall finish this focus and then do one more before we shall end this episode, because I would like to get through this, not quickly, but fully. Christian egalitarianism, 
Wow. I don't want to lose the ability yet. Love for the Faithless. I don't want to lose political power, though. Oh, boy. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. So did the Lord God command us, let us not we who partake in his daily bread despise they who abstain, and let they who abstain despise not only they who partake. For who are we to pass judgment unto a fellow servant? Welcome by God all the same. Far better that the flock welcome back wayward sheep like family. Through their wool has grown coarse, and their bellows foreign. Our Lord has chosen to believe in these unbelievers. Father men, too, shall believe in them. For the impious, the impenitent, the free thinker, those who chose to cast away their faith for reasons only they can explain before God, theirs, as with the faithful, is the kingdom of heaven. Let none brook divine testament, lest they invite unto themselves weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Which sounds very kind of painful, which we will do soon enough. But let's go ahead and do this one as well. Oh, a little bit of lag. It is April... 9th, 1967. Spend, spend, slash. A billion at a time, so be it. Construction, work, good work, shall sustain us. With love for the faithless and friendship between all peoples, good. Very good. Very, very good. And, and how many more days? We have zero days left. Beautiful, my friends. But I hope you enjoyed today's second episode of the Divine Mandate of Siberia. And it's weird because only in the second epi episode, we have four main contenders to reunify Russia. But it shall be us, the holy children of God. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Praise the Lord. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we might eventually end up preaching the holy word to those people in the Siberian Free Territory. Thanks for watching, though. And have a great, holy, blessed rest of your day.